Nah, terima kasih uh, dan selamat pagi to Timbalan Dekan Akademik Dr. Kamlisa Uni Kamlun yeah. and our pendaras uh, e-learning Dr. Siti Fatima and uh, dear respective uh, colleagues of uh, Faculty Perhutanan Tropika. Okay. Yesterday, the newspaper, in many newspaper, there's a project concerning 100 seratu juta pokok <laughs> coming from this FPT. FPT. Yeah? Oh, wow. Marvelous news. Terima <laughs> kasih for producing the paru for us. <laughs> the lungs uh, for, for not only Malaysia but for the world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from PEP, uh, we are on roadshow and this is the second place we are coming to. Uh, please proceed, Zul. Yeah. So, some of the things that I will be covering very briefly, uh, Malaysian Blueprint, Depan, our KPI, our achievement and also your faculty, considering how it's related to ELMPT, considering uh, publication and we hope that uh, at the end of this session, all of us will be inspired and motivated uh, to know that everything has been prepared to enhance uh, productivity among our academic staff as well as our students. Please proceed. So, a small team from Pusat E Pembelajaran. Uh, we have Wan Salmi, our team Pelan Pengarah. Okay. And then we have uh, Penyelaras, uh, Muk OER is Wan Eugenia. Uh, Penyelaras uh, for Blended Learning and Latihan is Inci Amiluddin over here. Okay. And we have uh, Zhu Fadli, our strong man. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jawatan kosong, ah? Huh? Okay, so... <laughs> yeah. And then we have uh, our Ketua Pentadbir is uh, Encik Muhammad Wazir. And then Alex and Fazil. Okay, please move on. Our e-learning coordinators, these are our executive from a PEP linking to all the faculties. So over here, we have our Dr. Siti Fatima. Can you find her? <laughs> okay, terima kasih Dr. Siti Fatima. Mm. Thank you for all the marvelous uh, coordination. Yeah, please move on. Yeah, can you move? Okay. Just a reminder to all of us that uh, PEP, uh, the mission and vision is for us all. And the first one concerning the mission, let me repeat, realizing UMS aim to achieve academic excellence and international recognition and to promote greater innovation and productivity by cultivating a meaningful and conducive e-learning environment. So if you feel you know that the e-learning environment, there need to be some kind of a review, some kind of an improvement, please inform us, especially in you know, all different faculties having a different needs sometimes that we may ignore. Our vision, attaining UMS aspiration to be innovative university of global standing, we through globalized online learning, GOL. And this is the one that comes from our shift number nine in our Malaysian education blueprint. And to ensure inclusive quality education and to promote lifelong learning. Yes, move on. This one, there is a link over here, and I believe uh, this one will be shared, this PowerPoint will be shared with Dr. Siti, to be shared to all. So they can click the link and they can study more considering uh, the strategic plan as well as the action plan that we have in place for UMS, okay, for all lecturers. Okay, so there are many things that are happening uh, behind the scene. Move, yeah. This is the Malaysian Education Blueprint, and if you click to this link, then this is our uh, important shift number nine, GOL, Globalized Online Learning. And Globalized Online Learning is just one of the enablers, the many enablers to produce our graduates that are holistic, entrepreneurial, talent excellent, you know, and so on. So very important, of course, the core is learned values driven talent. Huh? So whatever that we do, the Nilam Burni is very important to be inculcated uh, in whatever that we are having activities with our students. Okay, move on please. Now, this is where the story begins, is from Depan. 
Okay, and Jepun is the dasar ikut pembelajaran negara. Once again, uh, please contact, uh, inform all your lecturers. Okay, at least open up this particular uh, depan and glance through. It's the basis. Whatever we do in all the university awam berdasarkan itu depan ini. We respect your e-learning. Okay, move on, please. So from the depan, uh, there is the KPI that comes out from there. Blended learning. Move OER actually it's all mentioned in this particular depan. Move on. So the first KPI concerning blended learning. So the one in blue uh, is actually the targeted KPI according to depan. Okay, through the ministry. Okay, and for two zero two one two 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 supposed to be sixty percent. UMS is standing at ninety seven percent. So please give a clap for yourself. <laughs> give a clap for yourself, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So we are able to actually achieve a uh, way above the national target. Please move on. And for FPT, semester one, semester two, you give you give yourself a clap. <laughs> Marvelous. Congratulations, Dr. Kamrusa. Very good. Huh? Well done. Okay, go on. Oh, consistently starting is we already 100 percent now. Macam mana tu? Normally we start from there, but you immediately from up there. So congratulations, uh, great job done. Okay, exemplary lah. And considering the OER, so this is another one where we have a repository, and this is where the license that we use instead of the copyright, it is actually the Creative Common Licensing. And it is uh, very much emphasized by the ministry because Malaysia, Ministry of Education, is a member state of UNESCO. And there they are calling all the member states by nation, by government, okay, to implement. So we are implementing this. And if you are involved, you are also rewarded. Okay. 26 OER. Uh, maybe this year it will be 126. <laughs> okay, why? You know why? Because uh, maybe our lecturers, uh, Dr. City, may not know, you know, that the OER that they produce are the value for their LMPT. Okay? Uh, so let's have a look again. Reminder, uh, reminder. Go on, yeah. So this is the OER repository. Again, this PowerPoint given us all our lecturers to click in, and the step how to upload your OER is given. Okay, uh, this infographic up there is produced by Zoom. Yeah. Okay, go on. Aha, uh -huh. now this one, at least uh, emphasize this to them uh, that uh, whatever that you upload in the OER, okay, it will be uh, registered in, S in your SMPPI and then you register it in ELMPT as a non index publication. So each OER is 0 0.25. Of course, telling them, you know, that uh, OER, you got to follow the instruction that's given inside there. Lah. Okay, concerning the license. Huh? It's creative common. There must be no copyright materials there. Okay. So, uh, more will be said later on concerning this. How, how, sorry, Prof. How is it counted in Elan PT for this OER system? Yeah, okay. Is it so, automatically? Uh, okay, it's not automatically it's true. Uh, okay. So you have to put it in SMPPI and then you yourself got to go and put it under non index. Uh, okay, uh, 0 0.25 value and the penerbit uh, are the people who will come and verify. Uh, we, we don't verify, it's done by another third party. And there's our penerbit UMS, so they will look at it. Uh, just imagine, you know, if you got yeah. four OER, there's 1.0. Mm -hmm. If you got eight, know. I mean, those are values, you know, real values. Gazetted, you know, by the way. So, Dr. City, we have to inform them uh, that this is really gazetted in ELMPT. Mm -hmm. So, use it. Grab the opportunity. Uh, later on, the ruling will become strict. Mm -hmm. Stricter and stricter. <laughs> but for now, you know, whatever you put in, normally they will verify for you. Please move on. So this is very important news. Huh? The other one is considering MOOC. Okay? And MOOC is also one place uh, where FPT 
I think probably you might be having some people interested. Get some interested, okay? Okay. I tried, but it's difficult. <laughs> difficult, huh? Okay. Now you become very attractive. Please move on. Okay. So the MOOC, there's a platform for it. Okay, move on. And how to apply for MOOC. So again, show them this, uh, give them this, okay? This link, they click it, and they step by step on how to apply. Move on, please. So all the steps are given. Very systematic. All can be involved. Especially all of us, you know, have got our course materials ready. I would encourage you to consider sila pertimbangkan to take your course content and put it as a MOOC. How? Uh, go on. All the steps are given here. Okay. And this is so important. Okay. That your MOOC also report in SMPPI and it will be under click, uh, under publication, uh, general publication kan? Okay, uh, so there is a MOOC there. Okay, it's 1.1. That's a lot. 1.1. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so imagine you have two MOOCs. Okay, and it's all your own materials. Actually, just put it in a particular uh, systematic manner. And how to do it? We, the moment uh, you apply, we will call you for a meeting and we'll show you exactly how to do it. Okay? We'll show you exactly how to do it. Okay. So, grab the opportunity. Okay. So, what is PEP doing? PEP is actually a service center to help enhance the academic productivity of our academic staff. And indeed, you know, and if this kind of uh, platform is prepared, Dr. City, Sayang lah, you know, if uh, our lecturers don't grab the opportunity because it really re help them in academically. Okay, go on. It's all there, yeah? all there. So, challenges, very quickly, whatever that we do, we want to, we are based upon Bloom Taxonomy, Cognitive Domain, and we try to, of course, go for the higher order thinking level. Go on. The platform that we're using Smart V3, and now we're going to something called ITEL, is actually based upon the social constructivist paradigm. And all in all is that we believe through this uh, social constructivism, knowledge is constructed through human activity, students' activity. Okay? And the individuals create meaning through the interaction. What kind of interaction? The subject is a student, the object is the outcome, and the tools here is the technological tools, the pedagogy is up there in the tools. So there are rules, a community, and our division of uh, Tugasan. So the student, uh, under certain rules that you give them, okay, they interact with the community, it produces a certain outcome. If they use certain tools appropriately with a certain with the community in the group, it produces another outcome, and so on. So these activities, theory, this framework actually rules our use of our LMS, uh, Smart V3. And also all other activities. Move on, please. The big issue, of course, is engagement. And especially when we go online, the problem of uh, people reporting, you know, I cannot get my students uh, to answer. I throw question, people keep quiet. <laughs> face to face, I can get them to stand up and say something, but online, they keep quiet. So how could we uh, bring in engagement among the students? Because we believe that engagement bring in learning. So these are challenges. So some of the categories that some people have put up is, for example, cognitive engagement. So how could we give problem solving, critical thinking skills within online so as to make them uh, activated in cognitive engagement? How could we bring in some fun, enjoyment, curiosity, interest? So you may have your own ways, own method, own strategies, own innovative ideas. Okay? Uh, so you could be having... I'm sure we are all doing our own ways, okay, through our different uh, discipline. Okay? There are people, you know, on how we could encourage uh, students to be proactive, to be taking their own initiative, and so on. Okay, so all in all, the challenges between you, 
instructors and our students between uh, students uh, and resources. Students and resources. The content that you give them is just a PowerPoint. Are they able to interact well with the PowerPoint? So, uh, this is where afterwards, you know, you listen to, I mean, share how he makes his content interactive. Because a lot of learning of the student time, student-centered learning, is with the content. But content, conventionally speaking, is boring. Huh? So, how could you make it interactive? So, I mean, will be sharing concerning that also. Move on. Yeah, okay. And other things. Defect model, of course, rules, whatever that we use uh, with respect to our content. So, what teachers know, content expert, we are the people, uh, okay? Uh, our curriculum. And then, how educators teach our pedagogy. So, in forestry, the way that you teach definitely is different. Uh. So, what are your learning activities that you find to be useful? What is the learning design? that you find is appropriate for the content in forestry, in genetic, and so on. Then come along technology. So, technology, uh, how could it be used appropriately? Must be relevant, uh, not because it is there, we must use it, no. Okay? So, please move on. So, you know, we, we, we have all these considerations. So, these are challenges. And some of us have come up with some very innovative uh, method ways and this is where you can actually share it during competition time and also in some platform that we have produced. Okay, go on. This is the link here. Just click it and then you will see this big one. And actually this one is a Bloom taxonomy in the center. So what he do is that he summarize what are the action, activities and tools that can be used. Move on. So zoom into one of them, recreate, zoom into the purple one, okay. Yeah, so example, okay, at the highest level is create kind. Okay, so here you may want ask them to compose something or you want them to create something. Okay, so what are the type of activities? It might be uh, some video production, it might be producing some games or whatever within it. And what kind of technology that can come in? All in all, it is learning design first. Okay, so what is it you want your CLO, okay, then what's the activity that actually can support the CLO and then we consider technology. So learning design first, technology second. Move on. If you come and visit uh, PEP, our place here, block B, right? FK, what? FKI, FKJ. <laughs> okay, so you go up there and uh, our slogan there is learning design first, technology second. Walaupun we are encouraging people to use technology, but a big no to technology first. Hmm? Uh, across different disciplines, different pedagogy, kan? different activities are more appropriate. It might be just a paper and pencil is even more appropriate. Why not? Okay. Okay. So, technology comes in then. Okay, move on. And this is what we mean by you know, the TLCOP, Telcop. Okay. Uh, I don't know where, how many are here under Telcop. This is a place where our lecturers share concerning their uh, innovative ideas. And if you share it here, okay, Telcop. Maybe you can just open so. <laughs> Telcop. Yeah. Telcop. Just open it. Now, this is one place where, you know, uh, you have some uh, practices and then you just said here, uh, TNCA personally will look into this, you know, and he will give you a certificate signed personally by him. <laughs> okay? It's a TNCA punya pet project with respect to technology and labor learning. Okay, look into faculty. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Forestry. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Dr. Fauzia. Is it? Some more? Anyone? Uh, one, huh? Okay, so there you are, you have at least one over here. Huh? So many more can be populated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way to uh, share it is you go back again to the home. Okay, uh, nah, there's a link over here. Okay, so Dr. Siti, encourage them uh, to click here and then just submit. 
uh, then uh, it will be put up here. Once you submit, of course, inform Zul. Uh. Okay, in case you miss out. Okay, so this is the uh, community of practitioners, Telcorp. Hmm? Again, you see, all this platform may be prepared for us uh, to enhance actually our performance and productivity. Okay, move on, please. There are publications also for our students. Okay, move on. Okay, for a student, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, there are publications uh, that we have also produced. UMS took a lead actually to produce uh, OER policy. It's called the IOER policy. And it is now used also by UNESCO as a benchmark. Move on. And there are step by steps, you know, also available. And these just go to the website of PEP publication. All are listed there, okay? And all of them are OER. Uh, that means we use CC license. Okay, is this a help desk? <coughs> okay, and our our friend Zul is ever ready. <laughs> ever ready. <laughs> wow, ever ready assistant. <laughs> good, good, good. Strong man. Okay, and I think uh, I'm going to end up here by clicking upon this to show the launch uh, concerning the uh, new blended learning substitution as well as our uh, new platform. Okay, thank you. Yeah, come, let's have a look at this for a moment. The audio, is it on?
I tell. Learn remotely from anywhere. Okay, thank you. That's my session. Tapi tidak, tidak, tidak anu ni, tidak menyangkut ni, tidak masuk bawa tudung. Boleh kah? Kau, terdengar kan ni? Lebih gini. Cuba, agak pun saya pegang bersama lah. Anak biasa terus, kena akan dapat biasa mikrofon. Okey kah kalau macam ni? Okey. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning everyone. I'm Salmi. Um, I've been in PEP since 2018 um, before the before the 1732 kita punya era. And during that time saya, sebelum saya pergi PEP pun I was very saya pun hairan apakah kiraan-kiraan ni until we found the magic formula the 1732 and now I think the the mantra of 1732 is everywhere in UMS. But um, after, saya rasa after five years, we should change to a new things which is better, actually better for flexible education. But that is for PTG. Um, now I will begin. No, um, muk dulu kah PTG dulu? Inilah dulu ah. Okay. Um, um, what is PTG? Pembelajaran teradun gantian, substitute um, blended learning (SBL). So we use the thing. The acronym is PTG. Um, PTG actually, and for every higher education in Malaysia, we are supposed to implement it in 2020, uh, 20, 20, 20, uh, 20 or 29, 29. Because um, during a Bankel a workshop in 2018, there are a few universities already implement the PTG, but they are the one who will be, will be the guinea pig of how does it implemented in the curriculum and then as far as go it's a very good actually for lecturers and for lecturers to be flexible in their teaching and learning next to um, next so for those who attend the symposium actually you already see this but for blended learning um, substitute blended learning we have this two guidebook Playbook for Pengajaran and Pembelajaran Dalam Talian, Chapter 5, specifically, specifically on PTG. And this is one, this is the first guidebook, Pembelajaran Teradun Gantian. This is one, this is the first, this is, I think this is the second, the latest one, last year, published last year. Next, um, and actually you can find it um, online, but I think in our website, in PEP website, you can download, don, don, download it. Next, okay. Uh, this is the history of it. Um, we start the PTG actually start here, um, but during that time, I requested in the bankel for UMS not to start the PTG because we just being aware of what what seven three two is. So if I ask the lecturer to change to the PTG, the forty forty twenty formula, semua orang akan marah. Memang kami PEP kan mungkin kena suruh tutup because uh, changes doesn't happen in a day. We cannot force people to change, so we should start by creating awareness what is blended learning. So we we start by creating awareness on blended learning in 2018. That's why before 2018, when we send report to P, um, KPT, UMS result 30% below. Kita memang yang bottom lah, uncit uncit bilang orang Sabah. But after 2018, yeah, we are keeping, we have the awareness, and then until now, I have we had seen um, UMS, we got 90, 98, 99 percent actually. Yeah. So we become the, among the highest in in Malaysia in terms of blended learning. Yeah. So in terms of blended learning, we are we become the highest. Even yang USM pun dia tidak akan sampai begitu tinggi. So um, why? Uh, I will explain to you why. 
later on. And now, actually in 2021, we already sent um, a paperwork to Senate for policies for implementation of 2000, uh, this PTG. And then, Alhamdulillah, last year, and I think in October, the Senate have approved that we have we will implement the PTG in our teachings in UMS based on the Garis Panduan. Um, next, Zul. Okay, this is the formula. Uh, we start with, with 732. After 1732, there's a changes of 540, 3520, and then I requested not <laughs> for us not to change to it because we want to enhance our skills in blended learning in terms of the 1732 the formula and then now the formula change to formula PTG is 40 40 20 what is the difference between these two 1732 is based on our face face to face hours um, if you eat three credit credit hours face to face is berapa? Tiga, 42 hours can but the jam so 30% minimum tipe 30% from the 42 hours is 13 hours so 13 hours is this one one hour syllabus, seven hours the materials, three hours the the activities, and two hours is the assessment. So that's why the one seven three two. But now, and, um, um, usually when we implement this, I think the most asked ask question is, um, do we have? To, can we substitute? Um, the lecture to online, so so we don't ha we don't have the face to face lecture. We don't have any policy on that one seven three two, and we cannot say can or cannot. But in PTG, we can substitute if you cannot attend your class face to face, you can substitute it to online. So that uh, that is uh, spelled out in the Garis Panduan. Uh, spell out in the Garis Panduan. Uh, so for PTG, actually, the 40, 40, 20 is based on the student SLT, student learning time. This one on, based on the 40 hours face-to-face -face time, can? This one is based on the SLT time one, for three credit hours is 120 hours. So um, from the 130 hours, minimum 30% should be in online. So 30% from 120 is 36 hours. So 36 hours too, itu ialah pembahagian for the 40, 40, 20. It, so it comes out to 14, 14, 8. There will be a table for, for you to follow, you, so you don't have to count. And then even our table for the, the updated version, um, 13 October, released by PPKA, there's already the counting of the 40, 40, 20 is already there. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, you only have to adjust your your table for in terms of the, I think in terms of lecture and your synchronous or asynchronous and your independent learning. So, um, so next. Um, if 1732, physical in-person real-time, virtual real-time, what we call synchronous, but it means if you are away, we have lecture. Uh, we are not in UMS, we still have to do the lecture online, so we can do a lecture online. So that is um, positive. So we are not substitute, substituting the class, we still have to do the lecture. Um, if you cannot do the synchronous one, if you come back to UMS, you have to, have to, have to find time with student to do, to, to do your lecture. And it doesn't, you have to replace that in person virtual at the real time but for for the PTG substitution no in person physical virtual real time anytime anyway it means um, we have 14 weeks of lecture um, for PTG if you implement in your in your SLT um, 30% you should you can substitute up the minimum four lectures so four lectures um, even though from the garis panduan kebangsaan actually PTG is around 30 to 79 percent so maybe some some lecturer will want to go more but what we do is in PEP we will say this is the guideline the guideline is 30 to 79 but because the subject matter expert is the faculty you know whether it should go more than 30 percent or not so we PEP we give the, um, actually the prerogative for the faculty to decide uh, to decide in your meetings that 
um, you will maybe you choose maybe thirty percent or maybe forty percent or fifty percent. So it's up to the faculty to to, to decide. So it's minuted in your uh, majority academic. So we in um, PEP will accept that as and then we will report to KPT that uh, maybe um, for FPT only thirty percent will be using PTS um, at one seventy three two, but the seventy percent of the others will be using the PTJ. So it actually, it it ups to the flexibility is on the faculty itself. Okay, next Zul. Um, ini yang macam saya cakap lebih duluan daripada apa yang ada dalam slide. So we for one seven three two we have oh one seven three we have the infographic infographic slide. So for PTG will will come out with the similar um, infographic but with the new formula. So the lecturer wouldn't. Uh, when they put the materials in the ITEL, because our LMPT is will be based on the ITEL, you would we would know whether you already achieve or not uh, the requirement, the five percent requirement, the forty forty twenty. Um, next, one. Um, what is forty forty twenty? Actually, it is, is the same with one seven three two. One is the the old one. The one seven three two is one is the syllabus, seven is the material. So that that one and seven to come in here in learning materials okay um the three the, the three element is the um learning activities so we have to increase the learning activities same with our learning materials why because we are substituting our class so if we are substituting a class we want to know the students whether they really understand the lecture so there should be uh, an activities there to to gauge whether they understand maybe whether they watch the videos or they read the materials so maybe the activities will include like um, there is a gamification maybe there's a quiz the quiz yang tidak ada marka or there's um, maybe um, apa lagi di sini a forum so you have to in increase the engagement for flexible education to go the learning materials and the engagement of student is something that have to go hand in hand okay and then to the two the two in the 1732 is the learning assessment so it is the same thing but um, only how we count it in the uh, we relate it with our student learning time slt so 40 40 20 actually when it comes to itel nanti um, i mean will explain actually it will be we suggest uh, eight eight four so at at four but it doesn't mean at at four comes to at hours uh, at materials it maybe but we are that is actually um, belum finalized but we'll make it easier for the lecturer when you go to ITEL they can simply fulfill the requirement same as 1732 okay next one um, so this is the comparison between um, the SLT for conventional and non for the substitute blended learning i've mentioned before the 14 14 8 requirement next one. okay this is a table um, the, um if the faculty chose and uh, to enforce the only minimum 30 percent everybody have to do 30 percent so this is the hours that will be in the um, table four 14 14 8 if they choose 14 percent of total slt so it will be for um, 48 hours so 191910 so up to 50% okay um, this is for the three credit hours i don't know whether fpt have classes with courses with less than 2 hours or 2 credit or 1 hours yeah, we have one hour one hour okay so i think i didn't do i do only do for the 2 hours but i will come out with the table if you are doing 1 hours okay, okay. so total total like this is what i said that minimum if you do this you can substitute your class online for four weeks if you do four, four um 40 percent five to six weeks if you do 50 percent so you can substitute after seven weeks yeah just a question because this one hour uh, course is actually fully hands-on so is it compulsory to have the 30 percent sbl also, in, yeah. Okay. implementing the 
assessment? Okay, okay. So um, actually, in 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 our policy, in a PTG policy, um, there's a caveat there for courses who actually is a hand -on hands-on one. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be exempted, but it have to be in um, gazetted in the meeting. So in your meeting, you said that this courses is fully online and fully hands-on. So you have to mention the courses. So it will be make it things easier for us in PP to exclude the cost from SMP because actually whatever the courses in the the smart tree, we just extract it from SMP. So we have to do it manually if the cost is hands-on because um, there's some faculty due to the requirement, the professional requirement, they cannot fulfill the 1732. So we'll we'll be having a meeting in in PEP and then we'll we'll give the exception for those which with, with good uh, justification lah. Usually for you like FKJ, um, FKJ I think um, accounting tidak kan FKJ je kan zul yang kita bagi exception. There there are some there are some courses we give exception. So they will write a letter and then inform that the faculty have decided that this courses um, is not counted in the um, in the kiraan. But the thing is, um, we have to layers with BSM as well, because end of the year, BSM only took the courses which is listed in the SMP. So that's why they anti ada yang gagal tu. And the problem is, <laughs> it happened. Sebab when the when BSM ambil semua daripada SMP, sometimes they import actually courses yang tidak wujud kadang-kadang, eh, macam exam online pun import. Padahal if it is an exam, automatically we wouldn't fulfill the 1732 because in the exam. Kan? So the thing is we have to do it manually. So if if there's a problem, usually um, the lecturers will come to us and we'll be rectify with BSM. Okay. But, but usually, Dr. Siti always always asks us in the group. <laughs> oh, so we will uh, we we'll respond to her how to do it accordingly, lah. Okay. Um. So next, uh, this is then uh, this is for two credit hours. Um. Next, uh, four credit hours. Ah. Uh, okay. Nanti yang one credit hours, I'll prepare the slide. Okay. Um. Next. Okay. This is um, the, the updated version of Table 4, the same Table 4 actually. I will, I will show you the real, the real Table 4 that I've been using for this semester. Uh, but for this one, there's, there's one thing that, the new one is the SLT summary. So there will be um, things here, substitute blended learning. So based on what you have um, put inside the teaching and learning assessment, everything, the hours will be automatically counted here. So I think this is good because we work together with PPKA to develop this. Actually, this it is the same table for only we because because of the SBL requirement. So PPKA, Dr. Dennis, already they bagi this one SLT summary. Um, nanti I will share how I do it in my uh, in my real course lah. Even my real course pun tidak sampai yang 40, 40, 20. But Kita ada plus minus lah. So what is accepted or not is based on our own discretion lah. Tapi tidaklah sampai 15, 15, 20. Maknanya dia tidak sampai lah. Um, next dulu. Okay. Itu sahaja from me. Um, you can always email me. Um, you can WhatsApp me if anything um, for PTG. Because PTG kan based on the letter that we sent last semester, we will implement it, try to implement it next semester. This um, next match lah, time puasa. So kita semoga kita ada kesabaran <laughs> untuk melaksanakannya. Okay, um, mungkin saya tunjuk dulu Zul yang table four. Okay, kak saya tunjuk tunjuk dari awal Zul dari sini form dari guide tidak form. Ah ini macam biasa we will fulfill kita isi semua kan. So, because I'm teaching health and safety in manage, management of health and safety this semester, so put everything, the CLO, everything semua. Teaching and learning, Zul. Uh, this is where we determine magic with the numbers lah. And to make it easier for me, because I want, uh, I've said 30 hours, 36 hours for PTG. So, I will choose which 
topics I want to do it online. So like this, um, kasih gini sedikit. Okay, for courses management of occupational safety and health, saya uh, ganti dengan synchronous. Um, for topic risk management, synchronous. Um, kalau risk management ni, the student learn about hazard. So, how do I know they really understand the hazard? What is hazard? So, they will be supported by ada activities ni. There's an activities there. Online technology materials. Um, even though they learn it on secara online, but they have to do yang face-to-face for activities. Macam this semester, what I ask for the student is, they have to go around UMS, whether in the campus or in the faculty um, or in the KP, find any anything that they seems hazardous 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 so they have to took pictures and then have to analyze the risk and then they have to submit it and then i'm using weklet for them to send all the pictures and then just discuss about it so that is an activity actually that is an activity and i under and i know from the from the pictures given and their the, the, the discussion i know they understand or not what is risk what is hazard in the workplace so that's why i said that learning materials and learning um, activities too should um, come hand in hand it should come together and that's why the 4040 is easily to capai because every time you have yang online punya you do the activities juga so it, it jadi macam ni i've chose four topics uh, compensation online ini saya bukan buat online ni ini jatuh pada hari cuti umum <laughs> yes <laughs> so um, saya buat video and then itulah saya ganti um, and then uh, issues and safety and health pun saya ganti saya buat itu dulu so I will find this one for this topic automatically bila saya sudah buat itu dulu dia akan uh, saya sudah nampak dia cukup 36 baru saya tambah yang lain the jam, the hours Itu yang trik saya lah supaya saya tidak pening Sebab if you do yang banyak dulu you Pening, mana satu yang saya mau buat online So because online is only 30% So you do your topics List down all the topics and then you choose Which one yang You don't have to be in front of them to explain They can read themselves but we have to check Whether they understand or not Okay, If in our physical class we have a lecture We can ask directly, do you understand And you can ask question, we can have Quiz during class but if it's substitute We have to make sure that they actually read the materials or watch the video that we are given. So that's why we do need an activity to check whether the students actually have gone through all the notes. And usually it comes together with other quiz, ada marka, semua akan, saya akan nampak dalam ITEL tu ramai yang akan check. Ramai yang akan download benda tu. So um, itu, I think the best way, kalau if they, you want the student to to read the materials, watch the video, there's a quiz after that. So it should, so the 40-40-20 actually di, kita akan capai. Um, assessment, Zul, ni macam biasa juga sebab PPKA already mark 40 challenge is 84 hours. So for yang assessment 36 hours, so you just put macam biasa lah. Just put everything sebab kita boleh get except yang kuning tu kita tidak boleh ubah so based on this is based on your CAP lah cost assessment plan kan dia ada kiraan for 30 hours punya 30% for, for assessment berapa hours sepatutnya akan dia perlu spend masa so it, <laughs> kalau let's say kan tadi uh, kita ada activities yang online tu mm -hmm. so yang online tu kita ada juga assessment dan markah perlu ada markah atau just kalau kita bagi activities yang tidak perlu ada markah kalau tidak markah dia masuk di dalam um, yang 40 kedua tu learning activities tapi kalau ada markah, markah tu akan contribute kepada yang ya assessment so walaupun dia ada markah tapi kami akan kira Kami akan kira juga. So kami akan, that's why we have to check sebab dia lain-lain tu kan bila kita masukkan ini adalah activity. But quiz lain pula kita akan ambil item tu balik kan. So kita akan kira maknanya ada activity dan ada assessment. Sebab saya tengah fikir pasal MQA ni. Hmm. Dia kan every activities tu uh, dia mesti ada assessment and the, kita tidak boleh bagi sangat banyak Mm -hmm. activities to the students mm -hmm. sebab dia punya 
student learning time, dia punya assessment. Mm-hmm. If we go beyond that, macam kita kena question juga dalam audit tu. Kenapa ini ada aktiviti, then you didn't put any any credits lah, any uh, apa percentage of marks begitu. That's why dia um, dalam kita punya tu kita punya table uh, table four kan. Kita ada summatif dan informatif kan. So yang bias ini yang kira yang formatif ni, yang itu yang dikira. So kalau online, just bear in mind macam kami kan kami tengok yang tertip persen tu saja yang kamu buat. So doesn't mean um, ada kursus yang kita tidak macam let's say saya punya exam ini tidak exam lah. So masih kalau lagi belum diwajibkan ada final exam saya masih lagi buat online. Jadi let's say um, midterm is tertip persen. Um, topik midterm ini adalah topik CLO2 saya, CLO1, CLO2. So ada di antara ada di antara kursus itu, dia tidak mas, dia tidak ada penilaian pun bila kita buat online. Tapi dia akan dinilai bila ada mid, dalam midterm. Sebab dalam table 4 dia sudah masuk. Hmm. Dia, dia dia beza tu. Satu you have to make sure, bila kita buat online, kita tidak wajibkan semua mesti buat online. Only titis, for week sahaja. Four weeks sahaja, and you can choose penilaian tu, kamu assessment tu yang hanya dua sih assessment yang masukkan sana, mungkin quiz, tekstan, masukkan di sana. So itu itu, so it up to us lah macam mana boleh check. It's actually biasanya saya pun kan kadang-kadang pandai bingung. So, I will check back dengan PPKA. Bolehkah saya buat begini atau begitu? So based on the advice dia kata boleh ah, that's the way I do it. Um, maknanya daripada empat topik tu memang ada dua topik memang tidak assessment saya assessment saya akan tanya dia um, exam tu ada aktiviti. Okay, um, Zul Ana bila sudah isi semua itu baru SLT itu akan keluar SLT summary. Ah macam saya bila saya buat macam tu pun at bawah bawah ini tidak penting ni ini tidak tidak dia penting tapi for PEP yang penting yang ini for PTG <laughs> mana doktor Dennis. Um, bila saya buat saya punya ni learning materials bila saya asyik isi jam-jam tu mungkin saya boleh buat perfect lah kalau saya buat adjust ya, jam-jam but, but based on this saya dapat tulis 1999 so in our eyes for PG ini acceptable sudah 40 40 so yang nak pada itu sebab saya, bila saya cek balik dalam bahagian assessment tu Dr. Dennis sudah dia sudah markah Tu dia mesti kira untuk independent learning. Jadi ada dia ada point. So I cannot men, tidak boleh buat adjustment sudah yang perpuluhan perpuluhan tu. So um, so this one forty forty nanti sudah dekat sudah. Kalau kalau statistician mereka mendekat lagi tu so, perpuluhan tiga kan. But we are in the flexible education and then kebetulan kami dalam social science so kita tak kita faham. Awas kita mengajar. Kita tidak capai dah sening kita tidak mengajar. Maybe it's the way macam mana sistem tu capture the data. So as long as dia sudah sampai gitu, jadi TDA eh, doktor kam doktor kam dia tidak janganlah jadi mamak tiri sangat. <laughs> as long as you do the 40 40 20. And then we are start actually because people will keep asking oh 1732 kami sudah tahu, kami sudah master sudah. Kenapa mau tukar lagi? But it's not tukar. The teaching is still the same. Actually, the way we counted is different. Itu sahaja. So, janganlah tukar cara pengajaran kena online. No. The teaching is still the same. Cuma sekarang ni, our PTG, dia acknowledge we can substitute the class. Hmm. But the control still within the faculty. Nanti sebab ada orang terlalu cintakan online ni, <laughs> 10 kali dia online. <laughs> kan? So, we have to control that one, that thing. Sebab nanti, um, if the fact if the courses need a hands to hands on and you are the subject matter you know it should need a hands on so you can control actually you are the one who knows whether it can be hands on or not okay i think for uh, jadi finally bila sudah isi ni cap ada table phone tunjuk zul ah uh, table phone ni kita, kalau ikut yang lama kita tidak boleh ubah sudah boleh ubah lagi tapi kalau ikut yang ini all the changes in the green one yang ini sudah final version so you, you can um, go saya rasa dalam website PPKA um, table ni ada nanti saya bagi copy soft copy juga lah dengan Dr. Siti untuk yang ini ok that's all for PTG I think um, maybe for those yang tidak datang pada simposium this is the first time you le- heard about 
uh, PTG uh, bila nampak 1732 and 404020 nampak macam berbeza tapi actually the teaching is still the same the way we counted it is different so be, last time kita tidak ikut pun um, SLT now our PTG is based on SLT okay. um, that's all for PTG mungkin ada soalan ok Um, next semester itulah kita kita buat awal next semester and you have to do actually this one untuk yang ini dapat you just get the table for and you try to to, to do the adjustment there um, when I first the, get the first draft saya dengan beberapa TDA try dan kami pening kemala, kepala sebab ada formula yang dia kunci uh, so this one when we come out we have finally uh, we come out dengan this this yang this formula yang table yang 13 Oktober punya version yang actually dia easily converted dengan yang lama it's the same actually dia tidak akan ada masalah um, uh, um, ya yeah, actually not in every faculty but um, there will be a workshop mass workshop and will invite dia macam saya rasa 5 TOT 5 champions from each faculty to be trained Uh, and then they will train the faculty. Okay. Nanti ya, yeah, itu itu cara dia. So the five the five itu dia bukan saja akan champion for this PTG. Dia juga champion for OER, OER champion for MOOC because we will teach them how to do it. And also a champion for ITEL. So ITEL actually is still the same model but the interface is quite different. You will have they have some learning curve to to understand. Actually sama juga pun. But yeah, when we are uh, macam accustomed to yang yang smartri, memang kita akan fikir isu susahnya. But actually, it's much more. It's tidak susah pun sebenarnya. But we have to find where where's the the button that we like to use. Macam saya saya suka lap, button label. Uh, where's the label? I want to use it. Macam tu. So um, that is for PTG. Actually, there's not much problem. Sebab every not everybody have their own table for just converted the numbers actually. Um, For MOOC, MOOC lah, saya sambung sedikit MOOC. Bolehkah? Tidak cognitive overload? No, no, okay, okay. <laughs> Tapi ini simple. Actually, um, because FPT belum ada MOOC. So, um, and then, for those yang interested to do a MOOC, you just fill in the requirement. Sebab dalam borang tu kami akan bagi tahu apakah item-item um, yang perlu ada. Okay, item-item yang perlu ada. Jadi ada Google Form dan usually um, ini cara macam mana register ada Google Form next Zul. Oh. So dalam dalam form itu dia akan minta requirement apa yang mau dia akan minta actually it is the same with kita punya lesson plan. Sama actually. Sama sahaja cuma you um, kalau ikut yang sekarang ni we still use the four weeks kah kan? Sekarang ni siapa yang apply sekarang ni yang mau promote ni untuk buat mock for this year. We still use yang yang lama punya version. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Um, for those yang saya rasa saya rasa ada wakil ke yang buat content creator KPT. Dr Siti Dr Siti ikut content creator tu kan? Tidak. Ah? Ada kah di? Ada kah di fakulti ni yang ikut? Siapa? Puan? Uh, Puan Marisa. Marisa. Oh tiada. Masa tu belum ada. Because KPT dia ada akan bagi kursus kepada lecturers um, untuk buat how to create. Dia, dia skill ini bukan saja boleh guna untuk MOOC, boleh juga guna untuk micro credential. To make it easier to understand, MOOC ini massive online, eh, massive open online course. Um, dia versi panjang. Dia adalah versi online kepada kursus kita. So maknanya kalau kita, kita boleh buat, kita mau tidak mau buat kelas, kita buat kelas itu sebagai MOOC boleh. But UMS kita belum ada ketetapan itu because of we are, don't have the garis panduan yang menyatakan sedemikian. So for now, siapa yang apply sekarang, if you apply sekarang sebelum ada garis panduan itulah kan. You still use yang lama punya. <laughs> Lepas tu nanti bila sudah garis panduan, paksa lah. Kita boleh. But in terms of KRA, KRA, dia adalah So for weeks, for weeks kita boleh buat style micro credential kan? So so just follow just just follow that one. Sebenarnya micro credential or MOOC it is the same. Sebenarnya your course you can transfer to MOOC 
And from that one Boleh pecah Bagi setiap CLO If you have got 3 CLO Jadi satu Jadi tiga micro credential Based on your CLO Kalau satu CLO Saya akan apa? Itu lah yang jadi MC tu Satu je Yes, pandai. <laughs> jadi bolehlah lepas ni FPT. Jadi dengan diketuai oleh Dr. Kam saya rasa boleh. Iya. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, nanti uh, when you see the form nanti kita akan minta um, penilai cadangan penilai subject matter expert untuk menilai. So kita akan hantar kepada saya rasa ahli dia tu yang dihantar tu kawan-kawan ke kita juga tu untuk menilai kos tersebut dia akan bagi komen lah so kami akan berikan komen itu kepada yang pembuat kos pembangun kos untuk perbaiki lepas dapat review tu um, baru kita akan buka template template dia di smartri lah sekarang ini tapi bila kita pindah ke ITEL kita akan buka lah di ITEL pula di ITEL kah? ya kita akan buka di ITEL nah ITEL ni hari tu kuat saya ada tanya ke can we convert the source from smartri to ITEL? convert Oh import tak boleh. Tak boleh. Import dia macam ni. Kalau yang dulu smart to piece matri kita pindah bilik je. Kan? Sekarang ini kita pindah rumah. Jadi kita kena angkut bawa lori. Jadi kena download semua. <laughs> Terus update balik, backup balik. Ya dia gitu. <laughs> Saya terpaksa guna contoh itu supaya nampak senang sebab kita melompat daripada model version 3.3 terus kepada 4. Jadi kita tidak tidak boleh sudah pindah bilik tu kita kena kita cuba yang tidak dapat. So kita guna yang back, um, backup download backup lepas tu upload balik. Tapi macam ada tempo lah kan solution tu still can use to work system. Kan tidak terus-terus. Tidak tidaklah terus <laughs> dah. Nanti dah sempat import. Ah. Oh. Uh. Sempat ya nanti 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 Encik Amin kasih tunjuk dia dia, dia tu banyak trik dia ni okay. <laughs> banyak trik dia ni that's why dia kena jaga dia ni baik baik <laughs> banyak trik dia so balik pada MOOC so, untuk galakkan MOOC siapa ya dan sebab MOOC ni di bawah PEP so what will happen is we will actually we will guide you how to the subject matter expert is you sudah ada reviewer juga but how to do it macam mana, let's say you want to do a lecture on it, you want to do rakam video. Tidaklah kami akan bagi kamu rakam menggunakan laptop sahaja. Kita mau juga yang cantik-cantik sikit kan. So, we have iStudio di PEP and you can make appointment with us because you know you are doing your MOOC and kita rakam your video lecture di sana. Kita ada contoh kah video lecture yang kita buat? Ah, ya, dia punya syarat mesti make up. Nah. <laughs> yang lelaki kena bawa bedak dah, baby Johnson kah? Sebab our experience is, um, there, there are a few ones yang sudah pernah buat. Um, yeah, um, sama ada gelap ataupun bersinar-sinar mukanya. <laughs> saya ingat satu, saya ingat kami buat untuk Erasmus. Um, masa ada tu Eventin cakap dengan siapa tu CIO. Um, dia suruh pergi cuci muka supaya berseri-seri itu keluar. <laughs> But we learn from that. So for MOOC, itulah um, kami akan jaga siapa yang buat MOOC ni, we will help you supaya your video tu dia presentable and kita boleh bercakap macam ni and actually di depan tu ada teleprompter so tidaklah nampak kita macam A, U, A. Dia macam ada few masa yang di, let's say kalau saya mau rakam di sana. So macam berapa tempo? Satu hari kah? Dua hari boleh? <laughs> My experience ha? Saya buat untuk Erasmus. <laughs> Hanya untuk lima minit punya video, saya ingat tu dekat dua jam. Sebab dia ini sangat kamera saya dia tidak tahu berdiri, tidak pandai dibagi kerusi, tidak pandai. That's why it will sebab ada ada empat saja kan. So kita pelan pelan. Kalau tidak boleh buat, um, kita find another day. Find another day. Jadi kita try maybe try the introduction. Um, datang sana, hi, I'm come. We will lead. Saya, tapi jangan takut yang kita tidak ingat sebab teleprompter depan kita kita boleh baca actually dan kita tidak nampak membaca dia macam membaca berita lah nampaknya kita dia memang betul depan kita dan our um, our powerpoint tu dia akan ada terbang-terbang di belakang kita ah, ha. so itu, it siapa yang buat PP lah akan buat tu sebab kita di i studio tu bila kita dapatkan itu dia sistemnya tu sudah ada so kalau dulu kalau kami buat video mock Dr Kenneth macam dua minggu kan yang mau siapkan semua tapi this one kalau tidak banyak kerja dalam satu hari tu boleh siap hmm. so that's why saya memang promote for MOOC cuba try Dr. Kam tapi menangkan orang yang pertama kan kita akan memberikan kasih sayang sepenuhnya lah <laughs> PM2P 
Sebab kita um, saya rasa sudah beberapa orang yang sudah guna servis tu dan kami memang guna kami ada satu kursus Erasmus yang online yang um, dibuat um, platformnya di UMP but UMS contribute untuk sustainable development work, uh, sustainable development so kita sudah buat itu dan masa kita buat sudah itu yang partner daripada overseas dia dia puas hati dengan how we produce that one so we use that one cara bagaimana we have want to make our mock punya video teaching tu interesting itu masalah kamera shy itu yang kita mungkin perlu anda sikit lah but no worries sebab sebenarnya kami semua friendly friendly end of the day akan tanya lagi bila our next session <laughs> bagus juga kan sebab nanti kalau baju satu saja tak ngam jadi mesti kuliah keduanya baju lain lagi tudung lain kan boleh beli tudung baru macam gitu <laughs> eh, usually during the online saya selalu begitu bila online kan saya tak saya nanti student bilang suka betul dia pakai tudung hitam tidak tudung lain kan jadi saya akan cari oh, carilah tudung alasan cari tudung baru bila online <laughs> so um, balik pada sini sorry <laughs> sorry bawa cerita um, lepas one month ini target kita sebulan sebulan lepas bila sebulan atau tidak ada respon daripada review kami kami yang akan kejar review bila sudah okey ya lepas tu kami akan inilah um, kalau ada perubahan two weeks um, letter status of application um, dan kalau sudah itu maknanya sudah dapat link dia boleh proceed buat so just inform us bila mau publish Sebab kita boleh buat sebelum tu kita boleh buat dalam keadaan ghost kan tidak payah publish kita update saja dulu. So untuk um, you can arrange macam kalau sudah okey, oh minggu ni saya tidak berapa busy, saya boleh buat dua kali rakaman. So it, it depends on you lah, it depends on siap content creator. Um, rasanya itu saja kalau for um, MOOC yang um, sekarang ini sebab walaupun MOOC tu massive open online courses maknanya kita open to the world actually tapi because of security kita bincang dengan JTMK sekarang ni MOOC kita hanya untuk student kita ya kalau saya tahu <laughs> I thought we are open to the world so um, because of security kan dia copyright jadi ah. jadikan dia macam satu training training form platform for us untuk create jadi itu kan ini tips juga ni Kalau buat empat kelas kan ya. untuk mukkan, jadi yang PTG itu ganti itu sejalah video tu, ya. kan? Ya, betul, betul, betul. So ya, yeah, you, you, PTG capai, muk dapat, kan? Ya. Nanti PMTP. Ya. Tapi memang untuk FPT memang um, kita akan berikan kasih sayang lah sebab the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, ada yang baru? Ada lagi Zul? Ini siap, ini siap kan? Uh, jadi sebelum sebelum saya siap sebab um, untuk garis panduan baru ini kita akan lebih strict sebab kita we want to go global macam yang yang perform katakan tadi kan globalized online learning. So kita kena jaga the quality dan MOOC juga supposed to be dia boleh menggantikan kursus kita. That's why dia sudah terjadi empat. Dia, dia tidak boleh dia mesti semua CLO ada di sana. Okay. Um, nanti untuk yang yang itu untuk version itu lepas ada garis panduan kita akan ada satu jawatan kuasa yang menilai ada kita punya MOOC itu based on garis panduan MOOC kebangsaan so dalam garis panduan dia ada 11 elemen lah tapi dalam persediaan tu nanti kami kasih tahu adakah ini sudah dibuat ini sudah dibuat so pembangunan create content tu akan tahu apa yang perlu dibuat nampak macam banyak tapi actually it's, it's, it's as simple as logo dia betul ke placement macam tu bah technical sebab the subject matter you already know apa ni contoh rakaman yang kayu buat boleh tengok ah kasi play 7 minit je ni ah untuk video jangan kita bagi panjang-panjang orang kasi laju-laju tu nanti dan orang tengok kita bercakap <laughs> nah Ini kita punya PowerPoint sejak ni.
LDL cholesterol, high density lipoprotein cholesterol, or LDL cholesterol, the low density lipoprotein cholesterol. So basically, the low density lipoprotein cholesterol. Based on your point, point lah. Kalau point point terbang terbang keluar juga di sana. Betul. Carry the cholesterol from the peripheral tissue back to the liver. So we cut off one for men and another one for sperms. It's either LDL cholesterol level. Well, LDL cholesterol level should be below 1.8 millimolar. So now, at the end of the presentation, I hope you will be able to tell the three liter pathway of the metabolism as well as if you get the results on the plastic kidney panel, you will be able to tell. Okay. Jangan hijau lah. Nanti nampak macam kepala saja yang ada. Saya pernah ada satu tudung yang warna-warna dia ada warna hijau. Tiba-tiba macam transparent. Jadi dia pelik. Rupa saya jadi macam alien sikit. But the thing is, nanti bila kita buat rakaman, we will give, will give apa your do's and don't untuk bila buat rakaman. Kita akan prepare awal lah. Ya, jangan pakai hijau. Memang akan jadi balan-balan tu je. Kepala sih yang nampak. Um, um, I think itu sahaja. The actually, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buat appointment. ODL. Ya itulah. Jadi book sementara kita masih lagi tak full. Jadi boleh. So kita akan aturkan jadual mana. Ah jadi kalau um, sekarang ni kita bagi bagi tumpuan kepada MOOC sebab awak KRA untuk universiti kita perlu menghasilkan 30 MOOC setahun that that is actually based on kita punya dasar ilmu pembelajaran negara untuk MOOC kita sudah fasa ketiga kita universiti patutnya ada 30 at least but macam yang kita tunjuk tadi kita baru ada 19 so it's actually it's difficult untuk minta orang buat MOOC so we PEP we trying to make it as easy as possible for you the subject matter to share your knowledge uh, dengan yang dengan in a very proper way lah before this pencara takut bila buat um, MOOC dia kena edit semua kena ulang rakam lagi salah sebut senyum tak betul kena rakam semula but this one bila kita buat di PAP um, di iStudio um, after the rakaman uh, kalau tersalah pun kita ulang balik kita boleh gabung kita boleh gabung jadi uh, ya yeah. Kita lihat buku macam um, salah sebutkan tiba-tiba keluar lah English bajau tu tiba-tiba kan? Ha. Uh, it happens sebab panik kan walaupun sebenarnya dengan kamera saja, but we can do that. Uh, Zul tahu tu, <laughs> Zul tahu. So that's why kalau ada yang malu kita boleh jangan kita jangan orang bagi orang masuk. Sebab kadang-kadang our experience dia jadi tidak boleh bercakap bila orang tengok dia buat rakaman. So it depends on dengan dengan Zul saja lah mungkin. Ataupun if you want me to be there and then bagi sokongan moral, I'm all ears. Okay, that's all. Saya rasa form. Apa? Apa dia? Duration of video clip. It's more actually dalam yang efektif pembelajaran online. Video tu jangan lebih sepuluh minit. Even dalam SLT pun, kalau kita mau kira dia sebagai satu material, kita bagi ten minutes of video equals to satu jam student learning time. Ah, itu memang ada dalam garis panduan kebangsaan memang gitu. Iya hmm. hmm. sebab, sebab sebab itu bila kita rakam tu yang lecture 2 jam tu actually kalau kita potong yang kita bercerita kita potong macam-macam rehat dia akan jadi itu dia akan jadi lebih kurang 10 minit bagi satu topik. So, kadang-kadang kita tegur lagi student kita tanya soalan ah. That's why kita bila kami discuss because we have a bengkel berikat kebangsaan and then that's it. Masa tu saya baru juga tu bila dia ceritakan logik lah memang lah yang betul pure ilmu the knowledge is that ten minutes that that will be equal to one hour so one hours mungkin student to understand mungkin dia kena cari maklumat lagi what actually does it mean that's why sekarang ni bila kita sebut sebut SLT bukan TLT teacher learning time bukan it's not based on lecturer but based on the beban student so for 10 minutes for lecture of video 
equals to one hours punya beban. So 10 minutes is good because um, kita tidak sempat boring lagi. Kalau lebih lama, usually kita pun akan kasih cepat tu. Kita mahu tahu what actually happen. Tengok video, tengok cerita drama Korea online. Saya tak sabar lah mahu tengok apa hujungnya dengan mama tiri ni. Kita kasih cepat kan. Our student will do the same. So to make sure that um, to make sure that they didn't do that, uh, we do that. Kita buat pendek-pendek. Ada lagi satu style saya rasa akan di share nanti. Tengah-tengah tengok best-best tengok video ada quiz. Dia tanya soalan yang kita tanya tadi. Baru dia boleh proceed. Eh, eh, itu simple. Sebenarnya dengan uh, H5P boleh buat tapi kita punya sistem tak, tak, tapi kita boleh buat. Saya, siapa yang pernah ada quizzes ada tu dia buat. Dia boleh buat. Kalau you try do quizzes your video, dia akan boleh keluar item yang kita tanya soalan. So dia um, base, macam dia bagi like, kita bagi tanya pasal definition ini, lepas kita habis kita tanya balik. Um, to proceed answer this question. Jadi akan pop up nanti our video. Hmm. -mm. So I think that's all for um, panjang juga pula saya bagi ucap sebab dua bakal kan. <laughs> Thank you kita pergi kepada ITEL lah seterusnya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah uh, dan selamat pagi. Terima kasih kepada uh, Dr. Kam yang sudi menerima kedatangan kami pada pagi ini. Uh, road show eh kita buat pagi ini adalah road show uh, maksudnya tid Uh, tidak secara uh, hands on sepenuhnya lah uh, which, uh, maksudnya we will uh, uh, introduce you what is ITEL and how to go about with it ok so uh, sebab later on kita akan uh, adakan uh, TOT session dengan penyelaras dan five others uh, yang uh, daripada uh, fakulti untuk join kita di sana uh, we will have it all hands on and then balik semula ke sini dan akan buat uh, menti-mentor punya sistem di fakulti. So that will be more effective. Yeah? So uh, to start with, uh, I will only talk a little bit on introduction to ITEL and its implementation. Okay, so uh, basically apa yang kita hendak buat dalam ITEL ini, the ITEL is something new. It's a new platform. So it's a new opportunity for us to move from the old way of thinking, a old way of practices to a new way of practices. That is one. Number two, it is about PTG, gantian, not substitution. Dulu kita substitute, tapi now kita ganti. Last time kita substitute, uh, kita, 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 kita uh, <laughs> dulu kita support sahaja. Sorry, dulu kita support sahaja, now kita ganti dia. Kita punya teaching and learning tu. So, it's on us then. Kita bayangkan kita adalah the system in the computer uh, embedded learning itu. Ya? Kita di sana. Kita bukan bukan lagi menggunakan kita punya uh, uh, lecture itu untuk support. That is why Smart UMS dah jadi macam the dumping ground untuk all kita punya notes everything dekat sana as long as dapat capai 1732 so now it's all different no more dumping ground i tell it's not a dumping ground okey sebab dia tak support lagi dia adalah ganti kita so kalau kita berada di sana just imagine that we are in the system we are the system for the student to learn it's just we are not physical Okay, itu saya ada different concept yang kita kena faham. So, now what we are going to do is we how are we going to engage our student using educational technology in substitute teaching and learning. If the word substitute dekat sana, it's not uh, support lagi. Okay, so that is why. Uh, kita sudah uh, senat pun sudah meluluskan garis panduan untuk PTG kita so we use that one macam Puan Sami cakap it's all back to the faculty untuk menentukan 30 ke 40 ke 50 ke sampai 79 ok so that is not in our scope lah yeah? walaupun garis panduan memang menyatakan until maximum 79% 
79% not 80% kenapa tak 80 kalau 80 dah lain dah dia bukan PTG okay. sebab tu kita stop sampai 79 And nanti kalau tanya ada yang pensyarat tanya kenapa 79 satu saja lagi kasihlah barang 80 no cannot sorry ok 79.99 <laughs> maximum ok so tak boleh 80 80 dah jadi something else dah ok that is why the reason kenapa 79 right Zul kita move on from here kita tengok what is the mean by engaging student using educational technology <coughs> right so this is I based on the 3 credit hours lah ya yeah? sebab basically inilah kita punya punya uh, most of our courses based on the 3 credit hours yang ni macam uh, Puan Salmi mentioned earlier 40, 40, 20 so learning material, these are all based on learning our learning material, our learning activities and our learning assessments so these are 14 item, 14 item and 14 item so we have 4 weeks to complete all this 4 weeks to put us in the ITEL ok, not 4 weeks to dump everything alright two different concept ok no more smart UMS lupakan smart UMS they are gone they are gone no more don't talk about that one I Puan Salmi me uh, Prof Fung, we forget about smart UMS so when we talk, people talking about smart, smart UMS I have to refresh balik macam mana to do smart UMS bila friends ask me macam mana nak buat yang ni macam ni oh kejap ya I'm been dah move on to I tell this semester kan so I dah lupa so we have to do that we have to forget all about smart UMS sebab once kita masih lagi ada smart UMS we have the tendency to dump all the thing dalam sana but these are two different concept dah eh? kita move on eh? move on menjawab soalan tadi Dr. Kam yes we have to take all our furniture kalau boleh semua pasu bunga apa semua bawa semua sekali jangan tinggal everything yes, to move on new house new neighborhood new friends new kawan-kawan sekeliling rumah no more rumah lama bye bye that that uh, neighborhood we are talking about neighborhood now eh bukan saja rumah baru eh new bungalow cantik lagi colorful lagi eh so we have to move now Okay, kita punya shift paradigm shift pun kena move jugalah bersama in that case yeah? so how to do that alright, kita masih ada lagi windows kita bagi lagi peluang yang tak sempat nak cari lori yang besar-besar bawa sikit-sikit, ok boleh yeah? so but you have to put it in your folder keluarkan dia daripada your smart UMS itu masukkan dalam your folder then transfer lah ke dalam Uh, I tell, it's like all over again lah yang macam rumah baru lah, kena sapu sampah, buang sampah habuk mop, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 kali mop masih lagi ada berdebu kan so it's the same thing, we have to do all over again but in a new way in a new uh, method, in a new approach, that is why I am using PEP uh, encouraging interactive participation itu So we are moving that one, that, that direction. No more dumping ground. Right, so here, 40%, 14 item, 4 weeks. So I would suggest that dalam setiap week itu, kita masukkanlah kita punya material, kita punya activity and kita punya assessment. Sepanjang 4 minggu, bahagikanlah ini. That is how we work it. Kan? Sebab kita ada 14 item, kita kena kena masukkan bagi 4 minggu itu ok and then 14 item so when you have your learning material couple it with your learning activities learning activities can buat dua a simple learning activities ok and then mungkin one of the week tu kita masukkan mungkin a, a assessment and then assessment ini juga boleh jadi kita punya uh, let's say kita punya uh, uh, table 4 ya 20%, 10%, 10% untuk untuk a continuous assessment. Manakala 40% for the uh, examination dan juga test ke whatever. Okay, so this the 40% boleh masukkan dalam learning assessment ini. You know what I mean? 
I will show you my my identity so that you can see clearly. Okay, uh, so kita move on, please. Right. <coughs> so uh, this is what it means by the interactive study. So we have four four uh, uh, components. Yeah, kita have engaging student participation, sustainable workable, uh, workable, workable. Uh, activities, learning activities, and everything must be based on our CLO Yuga. It has to be cohesive, where the interconnected and organized all the uh, item kita masukkan itu mesti interconnected dan juga organized and has to be interactive. Okay, to explain that, kita ada this eight aspects. Yeah, kita have. Um, Tengok dekat exhibition ni saja. We have to pay uh, attention on student needs and their preference. Kenapa some of our student tidak engage dalam kita punya activity online? Sebab kita tak bagi needs and preference dia. Kita lupa about dia punya needs and preference dia. Bukan semua student kita sama. So that is why we try to cater the most. So, mungkin the first activity cater on the more on yang suka game and the second mungkin more on suka bercakap and the third one maybe yang lebih suka uh, menulis just give idea in the forum for example like that okay right so the move right so objective of computer mediated learning technology ini adalah terbagi kepada lima yeah? explore the emerging technology for learning this is we are going to do we are moving towards this Our students been born in the digital age. We were not born in the digital age. So we are been raised daripada in the university menggunakan PowerPoint. That's why kita gunakan PowerPoint and now kita masih lagi gunakan PowerPoint untuk mengajar mereka. Which is tak sesuai. That is why I say we have to move on. Eh? These are some of the five objectives. Um, move on please. And uh, In our instructional design, these are the things that we have to have in our instructional design. Yeah? Apply different instructional design strategies, select appropriate digital technologies, uh, design variety of delivery method, uh, design assessment method to fulfill learning objective. Okay, and to develop learning material to meet our learning objective juga lah. While the learning assessment pula, these are the five item. Select various type of assessment. Jangan sama sahaja. Kalau sama sahaja, kita pun get bored. Kan? And then apply assessment method to measure the learner's performance based on kita punya CLO itu. Yeah? Apply the assessment tool. Uh, apply the relevant rubric. So, we must have our rubrics. Semua the work has to be based on the rubrics. Student sekarang ni tanya apakah dia macam mana penilaian ada markah ke tidak? Doktor ada markah tak? Uh, yang ni uh, tolong buat ada quiz ni, quiz ni bawa markah ke tak? That is the next question yang kita akan dapat. Tolong buat ini, uh, yang ni ada markah ke tak? So everything has to be based on the rubric. So we have to have our rubric shown to the student. This is the new generation punya budak bukan macam time kita fikir last time. Orang suruh buat apa, kita buat saja because for the sake of the ilmu, now they are doing for the sake of the marker. Monitor the learner's performance, of course, through the rubric and our CLO. Next. So, this is how the digital content should come in. So, you can use video recording, you can use video, you can use interactive animated into infographic, you can use animation and also still image and photos. These are all can be found di dalam Teknologi punya performance uh, platform banyak online ya, yeah? they are all free. And content must related very closely to CLO. Jangan go too far away from our CLO rugi kita. Ya, yeah? to uh, spend so much time, so much energy creating our digital uh, content, tetapi tidak related to our CLO. Right, uh, next is teaching and learning activities. So We have to match with our objective and our CLO. Jangan lari daripada sana. Whatever we are doing, make sure that we match it. And what are the activities for learning yang boleh kita buat? Some of these are here. Yeah. Kita can use Como Space. It's very interesting. If you never tried Como Space, please log into Como Space. 
Di sana kita boleh We can be anywhere else in the world While our student engaging in the uh, discussion They can be anywhere in the world as well We can be anywhere in the world as well But the discussion is going on And kita boleh pergi to them And we can listen what they are discuss, discussing In the Kumo uh, space That is very, very helpful I like to use Kumo space so much Okay, of course kita boleh buat daripada FB Live, kita Telegram and WhatsApp. So whatever we are doing here, please masukkan ini di dalam kita punya ITEL. So our student access all these things from the Intel, not from uh, Facebook dia. Not from uh, the download dia punya Kumo Space tak payah. All it has to be done adalah pagi-pagi pukul -pagi, 9 semua log in dalam ITEL and everybody work from the ITEL. Nak pergi Kahoot pun from the ITEL Nak pergi Kumo Space from from the ITEL Nak pergi WhatsApp pun from the ITEL Ataupun nak gunakan chat Ayahlah gunakan WhatsApp ni Dalam kita punya ITEL ada chat Kita boleh just discussion gunakan chat macam tu saja Macam juga WhatsApp Okay Right and H5P is very interesting uh, Sometimes kita punya ITEL tak dapat nak support sepenuhnya H5P tetapi H5P can be downloaded daripada platform luar and then embed dal balik semula dalam ITEL ok move right so for the assessment assessment we can use all these things for our assessment this is suggestion saja ya yeah? uh, recording uh, presentation gunakan Flipgrid ataupun Padlet video boleh gunakan uh, Flipgrid ataupun Padlet maksudnya whatever that we are using here Uh, recording presentation ataupun video ini semua ini dia akan masukkan dalam ITEL student akan send the assignment dalam ITEL tak pergi tempat lain tak pergi email kita tak tak sibuk dalam email kita dah semuanya dalam ITEL dia access dia punya assignment from from the ITEL dia uh, submit assignment dia pun ke dalam ITEL but we have to create lah semua-semua tu ok right So, uh, just a little bit of this one. We keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we are curious and curiosity keeps leading us down to the new path. So, that is what I cakap. Kita move on to ITEL. So, I have to show you a little bit on my ITEL. Bukanlah nak menunjuk eh. Tapi nak tunjuk je lah ni. <laughs> nak share sedikit. Right. So, uh, This is how I, this is the ITEL, the face, the interface. Yeah? Once kita masuk dalam ITEL, okay, sebelum tu, please, setiap pensyarah, rakan-rakan pensyarah, if you have three courses, tolong daftar all those three courses. Dengan daftar dua, satu ingat kita tak tahu, kita tak tahu tak apa masalah dia nanti. Masalah. LNPT di hujung-hujung mencari kita. Kita cannot do anything at that time. Okay, because there are cases macam tu dah nak dah dah ni lah musim sekarang ni lah tinggal 2-3 minggu ni kan baru nak cari Zul Zul pun cannot do anything so kalau ada ada 3 khusus daftarlah 3-3 khusus because you will get this bila click on the my course dekat sana ok my courses so all your list of courses akan keluar so this is my course so what you are going to do is yang ni you can develop this one lah Ya, yeah, di dalam awal-awal. Uh, so all you have to do is just click dekat kotak sana view. So your course will come out. So this is my course. Uh, okay. Uh, so I divided my course. My course is hybrid course because I have e-mobility student. Okay. So my macam right now we are using Webex. So it's the same thing that I'm doing. I'm teaching here dan juga at the same time my student in Indonesia assessing the ini. Right, I am using generally. Generally, generally and generally. <laughs> I use generally a lot. Right. So, uh, so dalam generally ni you can just play around with whatever that you want to do. So I am also using my class using generally. Maksudnya I come to the class 9 o'clock in the morning, okay everyone log into I tell so more dah My students semua dah gunakan ITEL. So, we, I am teaching through generally. I tak guna lagi PowerPoint yang macam biasa tu. 
Dah lupa dah macam mana nak guna powerpoint tu Saya tipu eh sebenarnya kan Tapi nak, <laughs> nak buat apa ni kan tu kan <laughs> So, ok Kita move on sikit So this is um, just a little bit of welcoming uh, So the first part of my ITEL is welcoming lah Everything about about the course Next sikit tu And then uh, then uh, detail on the course So this is my assessment rubric Okay, so student can check the assessment bila dia hendak buat dia punya assignment itu dia can check anytime let's say digital poster click digital poster so so this is the rubric they can see the rubric here so sama ada nak ambil yang ni ataupun yang ni my rubric is very simple kan <laughs> so so we go back back here and then let's say our representation these are the rubric for the oral presentation and then it's always here maksudnya saya tak akan tutup the student boleh boleh access to the rubric any time of the day and the year and throughout the semester right so this is what we want this is the best practice tak payah lagi kita nak masukkan uh, apa tu uh, pdf tu mm. uh, it's boring mm. and one of the criteria tadi it has to be interactive it has to be interesting right kalau tidak kan student tak masuk Tak mau, tak mau pun tengok tengok kita punya ITEL tu right so we move on so here are the assignments assignment submission uh, case analysis so I just sediakan di sini so what they are going to do here is they just masukkan dia punya link sahajalah yeah? alright so my video presentation just now I have one video presentation kan 10% so uh, all I have to do is I created Flip grip. Masuk dalam flip grip. Create flip grip. But you have to be a, a, apa active user lah dalam flip grip. Macam biasa lah kan. Kena register and all those things free saja. And then all the student have to do. Uh, cuba play yang ni boleh ke? We have to give instruction. Kalau tanpa instruction, uh, student tak tahu apa benda. Ini background macam-macam background boleh pilih. <laughs> ini ini break, background uh, snow dekat belakang. <laughs> and then you can put whatever apa emoji you nak. Okay. Dah lah. Right. So, uh, contoh kita boleh rakam and we can embed that one dalam kita punya ITEL. Alright. So, tapi yang ni penting. This one is very important. Kenapa? Sebab this is where the student will upload their punya assignment. This is where the student send their assignment. No more email. Cuba klik boleh ke Azul? Dekat link. So, when I nak marking, I just go here. They are all in here. Cuba continue, just continue mana-mana. Oh, yo. Kau punya account dah pula kan <laughs> Okay So maksudnya semua di sana Okay I have all the videos I have berapa videos di sini Cuba hantar balik belakang I have uh, All the student punya video lah Over 100 Right And then I have my topical quiz I don't have My course tidak ada mid semester exam Okay, so uh, it stated dalam uh, punya ini memang tidak ada mixed message exam but I have to do topical quizzes topical quizzes by based on the topic lah Okay So, this is one section for the topical quiz So, all the quiz dekat sini Okay, so dah habis all the quiz So, every quiz yang I buat, I can put it here Alright So, in this are all the words Then, barulah masuk section The content itu content untuk the course so this is topic 1 so before that stop zone um, if you see from the beginning saya bahagikan dia by the section the first section is the introduction everything about the introduction about us about the course about the rubric and about the assignment the second one is on the submission okay so all the assignment all the submission in the second section and then the third one Barulah the cost Naik atas sikit balik Atas balik tadi 
Oh, atas lagi atas. Oh, yang dah masuk dalam dalam course ni. Okay, atas balik. Okay, so starting from here down is all about the module. 14 weeks ke 10 weeks ke depend on your module. So that is even simpler and easier for the student to navigate. And they find it very interesting. Taklah pergi ke atas ke bawah ke atas. There are a lot of yang I dah check from <laughs> berapa ribu tu uh, all over uh, kita punya uh, campus ni khusus-khusus yang ditawarkan is everywhere. If I were the student, I want to mencari yang mana satu nak baca ni. That is one thing. Ada yang too many courses yang dalam dia ada hundreds of notes. Apa nak baca ni? Okay, so it's becoming macam saya cakap tadi lah. Smart tu is a dumping ground. Kita tengok, bila tengok dia punya uh, apa tu uh, analisis dia dekat, uj dekat ujung tu 100, 200 over, 500 over input. Apa benda input-input banyak ni? When you look inside that, there are so many notes. Notes PDF by PDF by PDF by PDF by PDF. Macam dumping ground lah saya cakap. So we don't want that. That is why student pun tak 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 feel berminat nak masuk dalam smart UMS tu. Sebab itu, it's less colorful, it's boring, it's not interactive, it's like nothing there. So we have to move from there. Itu okay, boleh terima sebab dia hanyalah to support. But this one is no more supporting. It is substitute kita. This is us. This is me. Okay? So, Zul, please. So, this is my topic one. So, next. So, I also have, beside that one, I also have poster dalam my itu. So, maksudnya, this is as a cepat lah. Dia tak baik nak. Uh, a short notes for the for them yeah and then uh, this is my second topic uh, third topic and ada lagi tu ke bawah lagi right so i have this is contoh a uh, uh, teaching and learning activity so my teaching and learning activity this one contoh adalah i'm using the forum lah yeah but what make it interesting is i am also giving them batch Knowing that some of our students suka kumpul batch Yang mana dalam scout, yang mana dalam guide ke apa semua tu kan Kerja hidup mereka sepanjang persekolahan tu adalah kumpul batch saja kan So, why not we are giving them this batch So, I give them batch Of course, for them to be able to get the batch are the criteria there Okay Right, so uh, move on bawah Err uh, Okay, why don't we look at this one sekejap, domestic violence. Cuma masuk apa dalam ni, saya pun dah lupa. <laughs> so, these are some of the, my content di dalam itu. So, I am teaching them from here lah. Yeah, this is the definition, uh, domestic violence and blah blah blah. Um, mungkin tengok topik yang ketiga kot. Ah, this one, understanding children perspective. So, this one is more... Masa ni tengah banyak masa dan bertambah rajin sikit kan So these are the differences how you develop that one So these are some of the uh, Saya nak tunjuk that I have also videos Yang boleh di embedded di dalam journaling So how you are uh, uh, Buat benda ni You have to get into journaling lah Dalam journaling platform yeah? So you work your way uh, So this is the videos So I have one, two, three, four, five videos kat dalam ni Untuk them to learn for one whole week <laughs> I'll give more time for them yeah, Sebab uh, this is where I was away For one whole week So everything di dalam sini So they just go inside here as if they are learning it from me lah yeah? So they have videos And then uh, I think they have uh, activities following up there yeah? So understanding the situation, they have more interactive link. So what the continue? Where does it go? This is the link. This, we want them to know this. Not this one lah. Yeah? We want them to know this. Okay? So Kalau kita cakap dekat dekat mereka, okay, pergilah mana-mana, google lah mana-mana. So, we don't know where they go. Merata maklumat dia dapat. 
yang mungkin tak relevan but sometimes we want to control that one we want them to know this one you must to know this one if you want to know more it's okay it's up to you but we want you to know this one so how to control that one is by we providing them with the link tadi it's sure it's, it's sure that they are going to that link where they are going after that is up to them untuk tambah dia punya pengetahuan dia right tetapi kadang-kadang kalau kita tak buat macam ni this is my problem that I'm facing ya yeah? I cakap dengan dia, okay, can you please Google this thing, this thing? Okay, when they are Google, when I ask them back, the thing that I want them to know, the fundamental tu, dia tak tahu. Sebab dia dah pergi ke mana-mana dah. So that is the issue. We cannot control that one. Kalau kita bagi the link, dia akan the link, so we can control that. Alright? Because ini yang kita mau mereka tahu. They can go beyond that later. Okay, so masalah student, dia tahu banyak tetapi dia lupa about the fundamental itu sebab kita tak tak bawa mereka ke fundamental itu ya yeah? right so this is some of the uh, example lah that uh, when we are using i tell tadi okay so uh, any questions regarding this one how to develop all this thing this is just an introduction tadi i'm showing you how we can use i tell how we can Uh, implement ITEL sebagai um, substitution this is how it works this is how interactive it can be we we can be anywhere and we know that they are doing what we want them to do at the end of the day it's all back to our CLO and our final exam yes Yes, thank you very much. Uh, right, uh, I've anticipated that question, so I have to thank you one more time. Right, so when we are uh, logged into our ITEL next semester, so at the somewhere here, ada indicator, sama ada sudah uh, lengkap that 14 or not. So that is one. So in this case, this one, my ITEL ni, all the things are inside here. So kalau calculation ni, yang ni satu. So, I rugi. Although dalam ni ada so many items. There are the assessments, there are the... Uh, all those 14 dah. Dalam ni dah ada 14. More than 14 dah. Kan? Yeah. Tetapi, since I embed this one, so dia akan jadi satu. Dia tak kira what inside there. Understand? Okay? So, that is the difference lah. And, the trick is, this one is my MOOC already. Okay? I can do this as my MOOC already. Because everything is like that. Satu platform saja gunakan satu generally. That is the trick lah. Tapi I didn't do that one. Okay, so I just brief, just buat begini saja. Alright. Okay, so kalau nak jadikan 14, 14, 8 tadi tu. Uh, kita separate kan lah. Yang ni satu. And then bawah lagi tu. I have this. Uh, ini satu. Okay. Uh, even my... Uh, Webinar also I buat gunakan gunakan uh, generally juga ya. Yeah? And then okay, this one is for them after. So there is one, this is two. Okay, for that week. Remember that week we have to fulfill everything lah. Termasuklah the content. Mungkin kita boleh masukkan uh, tiga empat content dekat sana for that one. Mungkin satu adalah notes, satu adalah videos. Tidak ada di dua, kan? So and then another one um, mungkin the activities. So for the videos. In using, macam Puan Salmi mentioned just now, for the videos, if you are using H5P, uh, bagus kalau download lah H5P itu, eh? H5P itu. So, the video tu, you can stop somewhere and then put question di sana. Uh, other setting, do not, uh, could not move unless complete the question. Uh, bila dah complete tu, baru dia, the video akan move. So that one also boleh jadi satu bahan pembelajaran kita juga. Nah, so that one uh, yang tu kita boleh buat dalam aktiviti ataupun assessment lah. Nah, boleh di dua di sana. Aktiviti pun boleh, assessment, assessment pun boleh. Tapi jangan jadikan dia sebagai content. Sebab rugi kalau jadikan dia sebagai content. Nah, sebab dia lebih sesuai untuk dua ni. Assessment ataupun aktiviti. Alright. 
Any other questions? Faiz ada question? Okay, so kalau tidak ada question, uh, the best way nanti adalah yang mentor, bila kita wujudkan mentor untuk fakulti ni, uh, mentor tu akan work together with all the lecturers dalam group, smaller group. So that is the most effective way lah, yang kita akan coming out with the program. But until then, uh, if you tak ada apa-apa soalan lagi, so I think we can just stop here lah for a while. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much.